Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to another weekly recap, or maybe I should call it the monthly recap at uh, this rate. Uh, so this week we did get a content update, and there's a bit of substance to it. I'm not going to knock it too much. We're getting the first set of changes from the economic blog, as well as an Android beta for some new features. So on top of content updates, as always, I'll be covering anything else interesting in the old school RuneScape community this week. Thanks for watching, as always, guys. If you do enjoy the video, always appreciate a like on it. Really does help with a lot. Thanks for watching, and let's get started. Alright, so let's start off with this week's game update. It was titled Android Beta and Gold Sync Changes. Now, don't be fooled, Gold Sync is not an actual Gold Sync, it is a literal Gold Sync that you can now make in your POH, but we'll get to that in a second. Okay, so first up here we have a beta for the Android version of OSRS Mobile, where they're going to be testing out a bunch of new features for the client. Now only those that have approved access to the beta client will be able to participate, so it's not an open beta unfortunately. The only players that will have access are those that have been specifically sent a message within their account inbox. Uh, now this beta is pretty exciting because they are introducing a pretty wide range of features for mobile, which so far there's not really any plugins for the mobile client. Uh, so they're going to be testing out buff bars, fishing spot indicators, uh, HUD improvements, agility and slayer helpers, a chamber of Zarek helper, respawn timers for woodcutting and ore, increasing the draw distance, that's a big one, tile indicators, and chat improvements. For me personally, the most important plugin that they need to add for me to really play on the mobile client more often would be ground items. It's just too hard to see what has been dropped in the ground. Uh, so once that's in there, I might actually start playing a bit more. Okay, so moving on here, we have a few updates for Group Iron Man. Now these are mainly going to be some quality of life improvements for the game mode. Uh, now one issue that some players have been experiencing is kind of an exploit that group leaders were able to use. It was previously possible for a naughty group leader to prolong the leaving process of a group member by reinitializing their kick request over and over and over again and trapping them in an endless 7 day grace period loop. So if your leader was malicious, they could kind of hold you in limbo. Now that's no longer possible, so that's good. Now on top of that, as of yesterday, there is a new group chat specifically for your Group Ironman group. Now this tab will replace the trade chat tab for Group Ironman players only, although the existing functionality is still in place. Also, due to popular requests, the Group Ironman will now have loot broadcasts that will go within their group chat channel. So similar to clan broadcasts, Group Ironman players will now receive a uh, broadcast for when you get a valuable loot drop, a quest completion, uh, even a combat achievement completion, and level milestones. And similar to the existing broadcasting feature, you can set minimum loot value for when it will broadcast a message. And all of this is toggleable in the settings menu. Uh, so another feature coming for Group Ironman is the Group Ironman interface, uh, which is going to be similar to the clan interface, but will instead display group status, uh, the number of players in your group, how many lives you have left, uh, your group prestige status, uh, your leader's name, and your creation date. Now that's it for Group Ironman changes for today. Now that said, in the future, they are looking at a few new releases. Uh, some of the more notable ones are Group Storage Expansion, because some players think that the group storage is too small. Uh, emergency Teleport Shards, which I think would be something similar to Hardcore Ironman and Theater of Blood, where you'd be able to save your teammate due to a disconnect, as well as entering and teleporting to group member houses. All very useful features, and hopefully we get those uh, relatively soon. Okay, so next up here we have the first bits from the economic blog. We have the literal gold sink and uh, really importantly, extra bank space. That's something that people have been asking for for a long time. Okay, so first up here, you are now able to build a ludicrously flashy solid gold sink in your POH. Uh, the gold sink is purely just a flex, uh, but it requires 47 construction to build and requires 10 condensed gold, which is a brand new item. Uh, that has been added to the stonemason shop, five gold leaves, and five mahogany planks. Now, fun fact, for a few hours yesterday, Old School RuneScape had one of its first discontinued items. Uh, that was the magic stone. Now, what happened is when they added in the new item condensed gold, they accidentally replaced the magic stone, which is used in a few other high-level construction items uh, for a few hours that was unobtainable. Now that said yesterday they did do a quick cold fix and the item was added. 
So the condensed gold blocks are just over 10 mil each, which means this entire gold sink is over 100 mil to build. But uh, the sink does actually work, so I uh, can't complain about that. Okay, so that is of course mostly just a meme, but the main part here is extra bank space, something that people requested for so long. Uh, so previous to today's update, the max bank space was around 840. However, after today's update, you can get up to 1200 spaces. Now this is gonna come in blocks with the earlier blocks being much cheaper and the later ones being extravagantly expensive. So the blocks get exponentially more expensive with the first one only costing one mil and the last one costing 500 mil. So if you wanna flex on everyone and unlock all of the bank space, you need to spend 888 mil, which is quite a bit. That said, if you wanna only unlock two thirds of it, uh, that'll only cost you roughly 100 mil or something like that. So overall, I'm very happy to see extra bank space and I really don't mind paying for it. Now to unlock the bank space, you simply have to talk to any banker around Gilnor. They will set you up with a new bank space if you give them the required cash. Another really interesting part of this update is Ultimate Ironmen are actually able to purchase the extra bank space, even though uh, you can't use it. You of course can buy it, which I'm sure won't appeal to many people, but I'm sure somebody will do it. Maybe it'll be a new high scores on what UIM has the most bank space. Uh, so moving on here, there are a few other smaller quality of life changes at the bottom. First up here, if you are ever interested in fletching while you do the Hallowed Sepulcher, you can now do it without it interrupting your movement. So if it wasn't already click intensive enough, uh, you can make it more intensive if you want. Now we also have a change to the wilderness, a fairly small one. Now because you are able to be teleported into the lava maze and told to be unprepared to slash a web, there is now going to be a couple of knives that will spawn on the ground there. So you no longer will get stuck. Now one update I'm actually ridiculously excited about, uh, not very flashy, but, but we have a section here called additional chat modes. Uh, so we know that remembering all of those different chat modes is becoming increasingly frustrating. So we've added a new feature to make it easier. The additional chat mode lets you talk in a given channel without a prefix while still seeing game messages from the all tab. So you can now use the following commands to see how it works. You do slash at F for friends chat, C for clan chat, G for guest, I for group chat, and P for public. This is actually insanely useful because I always talk in the wrong chat channel. It can get very confusing, so these features will definitely help out a ton. So with that all said, that is it for yesterday's game update. A pretty solid one with a bunch of different quality of life features and things people have been asking for for a while. Not very flashy, but still a fair bit of content. Anyway guys, that is going to be it for the recap today. I hope you guys enjoyed it as always. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Now, before I go here, I want to give a giant thank you to all of my members over on YouTube. Thank you so much to Sejuani's Flail, The Hybrid, Ocelot, and Kush Patel for all being subscribed at the Dragon Tier. Means a lot, guys. As always, thank you for your continued support. Also, a giant thank you to Sir Rojas, Ryan Shady, Mexos, Base Titch, NDM001, and YoYo Sub89 for all being subscribed at the Runet tier. Thank you so much, guys. Appreciate it as always. If you guys are looking for another way to support me directly, becoming a YouTube member is the best way to do so. You can become immortalized in all of my future videos, get access to a custom role in my Discord server, and uh, get access to my video release schedule. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.